Howdy. Howdy. Well, first of all, I think it's important that we look at the title of my presentation. I wonder what might be running through your mind right now. I think what's important is the first thing I do is dispel any notion of what you think this talk might be about. And the best way that I can do that, I think, is through video. Here's one. Ninepence. I'm not dead. What? Nothing. Here's your ninepence. I'm not dead. Yeah. He says he's not dead. Yes, he is. I'm not. He isn't? Well, he will be soon. He's very ill. I'm getting better. No, you're not. You'll be stone dead in a moment. Oh, I can't take him like that. It's against regulations. I don't want to go on the car. Oh, don't be such a baby. I can't take him. I feel fine. Well, do us a favour. I can't. Well, can you hang around a couple of minutes? He won't be long. No, I've got to go to Robinson's. They've lost nine today. Well, when's your next run? Thursday. I think I'll go for a walk. You're not fooling anyone, you know. Look, there's no something you can do. I feel happy. I feel happy. Ah, oh, thanks very much. Touch off. Right. I'm far more interested in the circle of life. Uh, to be more specific, I'm really interested in how agriculture operates, from producing food to producing waste and then recycling those wastes back into the system. My goal today is to talk to you about two global issues that we're dealing with currently. And that what I hope to do is to present a solution to these issues that nature has already provided us. It's just up to us to harness that technology. Now, I'm sure most of you are well aware of what's expected to come over the next 30 years in terms of human population growth. By the year 2050, we're expected to be close to 10 billion people on this planet. We have to figure out a solution for how to feed all of those individuals. And that is a major concern. If we think about the resources that are available to us, some would speculate that we may near, may near be our threshold in terms of what is available. 70% of all water is used for agriculture. A third of all land available to us outside of Antarctica is being used for agriculture. And at the same time, we're trying to balance that with a sustainable system. Currently, 24% 24 of all greenhouse gas that's emitted is due to agriculture. So how do we balance production while protecting our environment. Now there's a paradox. We need to feed all these, all these individuals that are going to be here in 2050. But we also produce a lot of waste. We waste a lot of what we produce. I'm not speaking about what you scrape off into the garbage can at the end of dinner at night. I'm, I'm speaking predominantly about what we produce and what we sell in grocery stores. The things that we won't buy because of a blemish. It doesn't meet our aesthetics. So where does it end up? In the garbage. I'm also speaking about what we produce in the field. We harvest food, but we leave a tremendous amount out in the field itself. More waste. If we think about waste, what's interesting, as an example, we, we waste 55 million tons of food annually. As 40% of all the food we produce is wasted. If you think about fast food, to give you a different context, how many of you like fast food? Raise your hand. That's about 70% of the audience. Well, the fast food industry represents a $28 billion industry. Now think about it. 40% is wasted. So not only is the waste a concern, there's also an economic aspect to that waste. Another aspect is environmental concerns. This food waste currently in most states ends up in a landfill. Food waste is responsible for 135 million tons of greenhouse gas produced annually. That's 1.5% of all emissions. If we were to try to compare it to make it more relevant, if we think about just CO2 gas emissions from food waste, and we look at it globally in terms of what that represents, food waste is third in terms of CO2 emissions behind only China and the United States. To make it more relevant, think about ground transportation in the United States, all CO2 emissions from ground transportation. If you think about it, ah. 
Food waste doubles the amount of CO2 production compared to ground transportation. Now, that's the first issue. The second issue is seafood. How many of you like seafood? All right, seafood, we think about ships going out into the ocean, harvesting fish, crabs, other things, bringing it back, and then we buy it in the grocery store. In terms of seafood, the amount of seafood that was actually harvested from our oceans in 1950 ran around 40, uh, 40 metric tons, 40 million metric tons a year. By the year 2012, we were uh, harvesting over 120 million metric tons a year. So a big increase in terms of production. So we send ships out into the ocean, they harvest commodities, and they bring them back to us. What we're finding is that we are overfishing the oceans. The top 10 fish that are actually harvested globally are already considered overfished, including pollock, uh, cod, and her herring. So we're already overfishing the oceans. So a new angle has been taken to produce these uh, food items, specifically the aquaculture industry, which is really fish farming. So today, what we find is that half of what we consume is actually produced on a farm. But that's a problem, because the way it's done is that ships go into the ocean, harvest fish, bring them back, produce fish meal, and then that fish meal is fed to the fish or other commodity being grown on farm. So we're still relying on international fisheries to produce, uh, to produce the commodities that we need to produce the fish that we consume. So we have two major issues. We have a food waste issue. We're also having issues with the aquaculture industry. So these are major issues. Now the question is, how do we solve these issues? Aquaculture industry, not having enough fish to produce, not having enough feed for them, and also uh, food waste. Well, I think the answer is actually insects. Specifically, the insect of interest is the black soldier fly. And I actually brought some for you to see today. So this is the black soldier fly. Uh, it's one of the model organisms that we use for mass production because you can feed it a variety of waste that I'll talk about in a minute to produce protein. So I'm going to feed them a little bit while we talk. So a little bread waste in here. It's like a uh, home baking show. <laughs> we'll see what product we have at the end. But the reason that we think that insects are a viable option is because that most fish that we grow in uh, the aquaculture industry actually rely on insects as a natural diet. So it's an easy transition. A lot of the work that was done with the species, the black soldier fly, was initially done with poultry systems. The idea was that in these facilities, egg laying facilities or broiler facilities, is that this insect would colonize this waste. What they found, the researchers found, is that it naturally colonized the waste, but it also suppressed house flies, which are a pest species. It was also found that when this insect colonized the waste, it reduced it by 50%. So it got rid of 50% of the waste and the associated nitrogen and uh, phosphorus. And the larvae are 40% in protein and 35% in fat. So they're high nutrition value. The research that I've been doing in my lab for the past eight years, we've really focused on, well, what can we do with this insect? And what we found is that we can actually feed them a variety of different types of resources. We fed them dairy manure and produced the same level of production, 50% reduction in waste accumulation, nitrogen, phosphorus, and producing the larvae that are high in protein and fat. Other researchers worked with swine manure and saw similar results. So we could feed them all sorts of manure and still generate larvae and reduce waste. Something that was really interesting that came from this work is through collaborations at Idaho State is we found that we could also feed them meat byproducts. So when you harvest animals, you have a lot of waste left over. We found that we could actually feed that waste to the insects as well. They'll eat just about anything. We also found that depending on what we fed them, we could change the nutrition value of the larva. So we could actually select larvae for certain features, which is really cool because then we can design insects that are for certain commodities. If you want to raise them for chickens or if you want to raise them for aquaculture, whichever you choose. We also found that we can manipulate the waste going in in a manner that we can do two things. We can increase the size of the larva so we can get really chubby larvae, 
full of fat, or really lean larvae full of protein. And we can also accelerate their development. So we can actually feed them and grow them faster and design them for what we want them to be. But the real epiphany came in 2013 when we did research on food waste. We found that we could feed them food waste and the insects would digest that waste and convert it to protein and fat as well. Currently, there are factories in China that I have witnessed with my own eyes that are consuming 20 tons of food waste per week with black soldier fly larvae. They want to consume 20 to 40 tons per day. Now, we have to actually look at what that means. If we're feeding them all sorts of waste like manure, kitchen waste, fruits and vegetables, what you should know is that each of these wastes are very different. And that's a hurdle because depending on what you feed them, it will determine how fast the insect grows, how big it will be, and what it's composed of. So we've actually focused on doing work on the microbiology side. So we've looked at the microbes associated with these insects, and all these different colors represent different microbes found in the insect, the black soldier fly. There's a lot there. But this led to some really cool discoveries. In fact, what we found is that we could take certain microbes from the black soldier fly and use it as a probiotic. So regardless of the nutrient content of the waste we're feeding them, if we do a probiotic treatment, we can actually accelerate the development and production of the facility. So waste type is less of an issue today. We also found that it's really important in terms of maintaining the adults, because to have larvae, you have to have mom and dad mate and produce offspring. And what we found is that there were microbes that actually enhanced egg-laying ability of these flies. So if you look at the cardboard up here, you have two pieces. You can tell which one has the microbes applied to it. If these were nightclubs, this would be the one where all the action's taking place. <laughs> so for optimizing growth and subsequent waste management, we have to tailor the diets. And that gets at this diversity of diet that's out there. But we found that we can use different bacteria to use as a probiotic. And we can actually change the production of what's produced. What type of larvae are we producing? So can the black soldier fly be used as a feed source for livestock? I mean, that's where we're ending up. Well, early research focused on more traditional farm-raised animals, poultry and swine. And we found that black soldier flies can be used as a partial replacement for the feed that we provide these animals. But more recent research has focused on aquaculture for the issues that I outlined before. So now you're seeing how I'm bridging the concepts. We can feed food waste to them, produce protein. That protein potentially could be used as a feeding ingredient for aquaculture. And what we found is that soldier flies are comparable in amino acid content, fatty acid content. So it's a, su a suitable replacement for fish meal. And what we found through collaborations at Idaho, again, is that we could replace 25% of the diet for rainbow trout. Other researchers found that you could do a complete replacement for Atlantic salmon. Again, think about this. Ships go into the ocean, harvest fish, bring them back, process them to put, produce fish meal that is then fed to fish on farm. We're saying we can replace that partially or completely with insects that are reared on waste. So what are the future hurdles that we are now facing in terms of implementing this technology? Well, the first is biosafety. We want to make sure that what we're producing is actually safe. One thing you have to consider is that food waste, after, uh, after receiving food waste, is that food waste is quite diverse and that there's a ton of pathogens that can be associated with it. So you can have E. coli, salmonella, as well as a host of other pathogens. The second thing is we got to be careful that the larvae that we produce are not infected with these microbes as well. So work that we've done in my lab, what we found is that if you feed them a waste that's contaminated with E. coli, soldier flies knock it out. They kill it, which is a wonderful thing. Other researchers focused on salmonella and found the same thing. Fetal waste that has a contaminant in it, a, bac a bacterial contaminant, the soldier flies would kill it. The bad news was we did find, or they found, that there was an accumulation of salmonella in the actual larvae. So now what we're focusing on is techniques to, ex to ex uh, remove the protein from the insects through a sterile technique, and therefore microbes won't be an issue anymore. 
But the good news is food waste that's going in the landfill that's contaminated with pathogens, if we feed it to the insects, we can remove those pathogens from the system as well as that food waste. So biosafety is con a concern. A second is FDA regulations. Currently, FDA regulations prevent the use of insects or insect body parts as feed for livestock, poultry, or aquaculture. Now, the good news is I can feed it to you directly if you want, <laughs> if there are any takers. But we'd rather not go that route. We'd rather pull the protein and actually provide it as a feed substrate for livestock. The third is a more encompassing approach to waste management, linking sources with black soldier flies, trying to use this diff different technology to optimize the system. So that's something we're working on. Now, what are, where are we today globally? Well, there are production facilities throughout the world. Now, the Western, Asia has definitely taken off on this. They're producing black soldier flies as other insects and other insects for mass production right now. The Western world, Europe, the United States, regulations need to change before we can implement it. But currently, there are facilities in Canada, the US, they're in Africa, as well as Asia and Australia. So the equation to actually have this be successful is first we have to understand the biology of the insect itself. We have to change these regulations, and we have to develop better strategies and practices for harnessing the nutrition that's available in this waste management um, stream that's available to produce a more environmentally sound practice globally. I'd like to leave you with a quote. In a world of plenty, no one, not a single person, should go hungry. But almost one billion people still do not have enough eat to eat. I want to see an end to hunger everywhere within my lifetime. And that was by the Secretary General of the UN. I believe that the black soldier fly could serve at least one aspect of this, and that is, we could produce a viable protein through waste that has no valuable value today and potentially create new foods to feed the world. And with that, the soldier flies are finished. Thank you. <laughs>